Okay. So one thing that's very important about design is if I have a design like this that has ink that runs all the way to the edge of the paper, that's not actually possible when printing on a printing press. If I were to take this document and run this on a printing press on a piece of paper that's exactly the size of my document, what's going to happen is that at the edges here, the ink is going to, because the printing press is putting a lot of pressure on the printing plate, what's going to happen is that this, the ink at the edges is going to run off of the edges it's going to run underneath the paper, and so it's going to get ink on the back side. It's going to get all over the press, and it's going to create a big mess, and it's never going to print right. So what we do um, when we actually need to print to the edge of the page is that we print on a larger sheet of paper. So let's... Pretend this is a larger sheet of paper. Okay, so larger sheet of paper. Now, one of the things that we have to do when we print on a larger sheet of paper is we have to tell the printer where to trim the paper to. Because right now, you look at this document and you can't really tell where it might trim. So we add what are called crop marks. So I'm going to add crop marks. And crop marks are these little marks like this that indicate where the paper is going to trim to. And the printer can use those to trim the document and they'll make sure that they get it right. The second thing that we have to do is, uh, let me see. So if I make another document, and I make this, and I do that. Okay. The other thing is if printing, um, when they trim paper, it is not a super exact science. There's always a chance that it'll be a little bit off. And if I take this document and I trim it a little bit off, we get, we would get a sliver of white there, which isn't part of our original design. And then we would reject the job and the printer would be going, well, I, you know, I don't know. I did the best I could. So what we also do, in addition to adding, adding crop marks, is any place that this color or a photo or anything um, touches the edge of the page, we actually pull it out an eighth of an inch farther like that. And then down here, I would pull it an eighth of an inch that way and an eighth of an inch that way. And that is called bleed. And if I take this document over here, actually, I'll just do this. And you can see that I have some bleed, so I can be off a little bit. A little high, a little low. It doesn't have to be quite perfect, but it'll always look good when it's done. Okay, so, and that's called bleed. Well, these are called crop marks. Crop marks and 
Let me make that a bit bigger. Okay. And this is where the document actually trims to. Uh, we would not show this um, in a normal document, but I'm showing it to you here to show you how the document matches to the crop marks. And then copy front. And then this, I'll use red, is called the bleed. Bleed. And it's usually an eighth of an inch. Point one two five I N extends on all sides. Okay. Crop marks and bleed. And I'm going to save this. Okay, now when we want to set this up on our document, let me copy that because I'm going to need it again in a moment. So I'm going to go file new document, print tabloid in this case. And if you look over here on the right, it says bleed. Now the bleed. 0.12525IN. Um, because this is set in points, it's going to set it to nine points. If I go back to inches, 0.125IN. Okay, an eighth of an inch. Click create. There's my document you'll see that there is a little red mark around the outside. And if I, uh, let's see, command V, I don't know why it doesn't quite match, but I'm not going to worry about that. And I'm just going to pull that in like that. Okay, so that's an eighth of an inch bleed. It's set up in my document because I set it up at the beginning. Uh, command save. So in order to um, let's see, document save. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of type onto here. And I'm going to make something really ugly just because I need another headline uh, or another font. What can I do? Okay, Century Gothic, uh, you mean? We'll try this. Um, 200. Okay, two fonts on there irrelevant to my bleed, but if I go and now to 
send this to the printer. I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to Oh, right. Save as. In fact, before I do that, let me save it. File, save as. I'm going to change this to PDF. I'm going to click save. I'm going to do press quality. There's a pull down here. You can see they have press quality. Then I'm going to go to marks and bleeds and I'm going to turn on trim marks and I'm going to turn on use document bleed settings. And it's really difficult to tell in this color version, but in fact, top says 0 0.125 IN. It doesn't say zero. I click save PDF. And now I'm going to go to my new PDF that I just put out, share. And I'm going to, uh, there we go. And you'll see that I have my document. I have the little bit of bleed that I need. And I have my crop marks. And all of that's good. And now I'm going to go back to InDesign, or back to Illustrator, sorry. Uh, back to Illustrator, you share. Share. And I'm going to package this to send it out to um, so that I can also send the original file in case there's any problems with the uh, the design of this project or something needs to get, we catch a misspelling at the end or something. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Package. It's going to save it on the desktop. Notice that it says it's going to copy any links. So if I had any photos connected to this project, it would copy those. It's also going to copy any fonts that I used, except Adobe fonts from Adobe Online um, or fonts that might um, be embedded with code that tells them not to be exported. We click Package. Um, it gives us warning about we should not send font software to anybody but a service provider, somebody who's going to do printing um, because fonts are copyrighted. And just handing somebody a font that you've paid for but they haven't paid for is illegal. Click OK. I'm going to tell it to show package. I'm going to do a new share and I'm going to go to here and share. And you'll see here's my bleed test. There's a report in here. There's the bleed test PDF because I've saved it. And I also get the fonts. And here are the fonts that I used in this project. Um, and then I go to my desktop where I kept this and there's the bleed test folder. Let's see, bleed test, font, so on. I can compress this. So I'm going to go right click. On the Mac, it's simply compress bleed test underscore folder on a PC. It asks, I think it says share, and underneath share, it also gives you an option to just compress the folder as a zip file, which is what it's going to do. I click compress. This folder gets zipped like this, and then I can send this to the client, and the client can do with it or the printer, I'm sorry, send it to the printer 
and then the printer can print it. They can also get into the file and make revisions if they need to. And that is how it's done.